Greetings from the West, Nick and Planet Ripple here with more Monkey Kid, and this wave really feels like the last 30% of Wave 1. Fewer sets, mostly holdovers. The old minifigs are the same, so I won't go over them again since you've probably already seen part one. And being serious, I'm really happy with that video. My last upload for almost a year, it not only helped people discover this line, but got them to read the novel that inspired it. Many who walked in not knowing anything about the journey walked away endeared by Wukong, Sandy, Pigsy, and the rest. And good news, we got a couple new old faces from the novel to add, with Monkey Kid's Cloud Roadster. These handsome lads, the gold and silver demons, add some much needed diversity to Monkey Kid's villains. The magic gourds and slightly more old school look make them easy to remove from Monkey Kid's futuristic cities and just recreate scenes from their debut. Like being sucked into their own gourd and digested. They got better. Their vehicles are simple but striking. Again, kinda old world looking. And they even squeezed in space for a prisoner or two. Great designs and characters in their own right, but just generic enough to fit whatever scene you need. Okay, next set. Uh, oh, right. This is one of my favorite Monkey Kid contraptions. If there's a theme to Monkey Kid design, it's to always be shamelessly over the top. And this channel has spirit better than any other builds to date, including later waves. The naked engine, massive intakes, and tiny front screen create this Roger Rabbit effect, like there's a literal cartoon set on my table. It's a blast to build, but some bits break off easily, and there are remnants of a function that didn't pad out, where the wheels would have tilted up or down slightly. Some of the rigging's still there, like some useless tendon. The hubcap stickers are a little annoying, but scattered loosely enough that you don't need to match the box perfectly. Just arrange them how you want. But is it worth $70? Eh, barely. I could see it being 60, but it is very big. Big as a Lego car can be, like, jeez. And all for such an aggressive design. But if you're not here for the car and just want those shiny demon boys, oof. Evil Foundry. This one is good, but it annoys me. Getting the heroes out of the way, Maze there, and MK gets a jetboard. It's alright. My second favorite bit is the plow. It's a dumb little thing that fits nicely with other bull vehicles, and it combines with a foundry to make a big rolling castle. But not really. No wheels on most of this thing, just casters. And on some surfaces, you can scrape it along, but it would work better as a completely stationary castle or a full vehicle like the Fortrex. This half and half approach is kind of weak, and I have to think real wheels cross the designer's mind at some point. Aside from that, there is a lot to enjoy. Tons of space for minifigs open up, and adequate space when closed. Floor isn't too gappy, walls are lined with terminals, food and weapon storage, a prison cell. The second floor is some meaty turret builds, and a couple of workstations for Red Sun to perform maintenance, I mean surgery, on his dad. The table is his centerpiece, raising the demon bull king like Frankenstein's monster, energized by a furnace that lights up pretty darn good. Just be careful removing him or his butt panel will stick to the table. And yes, that is the demon bull king. Your eyes don't fool you. This is his normal size, when he doesn't go all icon of sin. And I'm amazed by how many details carried over from the bigger model. The ribs, those gross half-melted fleshy bits, it's all there. And this is my first favorite part of the set, Big Senator Armstrong energy. It's just great to have him for role-playing purposes. Scenes where he isn't the size of a city block and you want a more down and dirty fist fight with a kid or a Wukong. He looks great leading troops, still a little bigger than some of their machines. But is he worth $140? <laughs> no. You're better off going through a parts list and piecing him together, though good luck finding a sticker sheet. But it is worth getting the whole Demon Bull family in one set, Red Sun still being great, Princess Iron Fan getting a little rocket stool, and look, even Bob's there. Before, you'd have to spend $150 between these two sets to have them all. As of Wave 3, it's more like 130 but come on, 130 40 50 At that scale, the difference becomes negligible enough that it really comes down to how you want to play. Are you more of a castle playset person or a giant monster person? It is a good castle, but as an answer to the Monkey Kid Team HQ, it's just okay, but perfectly priced for what it is, as is usually the case with bigger Monkey Kid sets. But what about smaller sets? Sandy Speedboat. This set is divisive. I like the boat itself, that Sandy gets something with his explosive colors, and right around the same dimensions as Pixie's food truck, which I've already covered, and Mace Dragon Horse Jet, which I'll cover next time. It's literally Sandy as a boat, right down to bullets that look like Sandy's beads, and stripes matching his pants. The long sleek lines and bulky round shapes clash dramatically, and there's enough space for the big guy himself without it being ridiculously big to accommodate him you know, by Monkey Kid standards. And unlike some vehicles, this rolls smoothly as a baby's carriage. 
So yeah, Stella design, but that's not the whole set. The kid gets another jet board, which I actually think looks nicer than the big one, keeping the antennae of Wave 1 builds, Bigsy's there, and another new face, the Spider Queen, one of the more original characters in Monkey Kid lore. Journey to the West does feature spider people, specifically seven spider sisters which Wukong smushed, but no Spider Queen. Maybe this is an eighth sister who survived the Monkey King's wrath. I like the idea of characters like this starting in the background, modern technology giving them a chance to move up in the world. She hasn't had her day yet, but she will. This is a beautiful minifig. Silky webbed dress with spider legs hugging her waist, simple shoulder armor, and a wicked crown with some hair poking out the back. Sharp face printing with bony cheeks, sunken eyes, and a beauty spot, why not? Her staff's too heavy for some poses, but she holds it fine set on her throne. She gets a few walkers before long, but this one's still my favorite. The colors, proportions, and spider carrying capacity give it a personality that just suits her, looking like a cyborg part of her body. And then there's this cave where she sticks Pigsy. Okay, so is $60 overpriced? Uh, no. The price to part ratio isn't there, but the volume of stuff is. That boat is worth at least 25 by itself, 30 if we're being generous. Big figs are about $10 individually. The queen plus her mount are another 10. Then there's all the other bits. This is absolutely $60 worth of plastic. I've seen people lambast this set as too pricey when really, I think there's just a lot here they aren't interested in. They either just want the figures, or just the Spider Queen stuff, or just the boat. And you know what? They're right. They should be able to get some of these things by themselves. All this stuff here should be its own set. For $20, this would make a great introduction to Monkey Kid. But staying consistent with Wave 1, you don't just get a little Monkey Kid at a time. You get a lot, whether you want it or not. And I think it's down to a cultural difference. This was made for China, and a couple of my friends who've lived there, or at least have family there, have told me that us in the West, especially Americans, we're chronically obsessed with the best deals, the best sales. We'll sooner splurge on five or six little things than one big thing, even if we're spending more because they're all in separate packages, so it feels like getting more stuff than we really are. But in China, they prefer everything they need being in one box. And that's what you get with Monkey Kid. One box with a little of everything. It's just another way Monkey Kid wasn't designed for a consumer culture like mine. Because we're becoming a problem for LEGO. Crazy as it sounds, $50 is not a lot of money to spend on pieces of plastic. Nor is 60, 70, or 80. But it's a lot for us. People here can't just drop $80 these days. So Lego's people are scratching their heads over in Denmark at how to make this relationship work. Meanwhile, China's middle class is bigger than our entire population. So when your biggest market is failing you, what's a toy company to do? Reach out to a new biggest market with a line like this. But with a few more impulse buys, those 10 to $15 entry level sets, minifig blister packs, poly bags, Monkey Kid could have a bigger audience in the West. Like this, look at this brickhead. It's perfect, and just $10. My brickhead's experience is limited. This is the only one I've ever had. But with the layered hair, big ears, feathers, printed armor, and gold bits, this brickhead looks pretty super to me. I got it as a joke, something to pit against the Demon Bull King as one of Wukong's size-altering transformations. But for $10, it's as good an introduction to Monkey Kid as any, and it's not even technically par of the line. So that's Wave 2. It's good, but not great. It takes a few steps expanding the world with its villains, but it's just vehicles this time, which isn't something I usually complain about. I'm primarily a vehicle guy, but I would have loved to extend this street a little with another building or alleyway. I guess this'll do. That actually doesn't look too bad. Wave 2's just more the same for those who already like the theme. We'll see in part 3 if the next wave's offerings really push the line forward. Spoiler alert, they do. That's it for today. To support my work, please check out my books on Amazon or Rich.io, or my Patreon page for early videos, exclusive videos, your name in the credits, signed paperbacks, and if you can afford it, your own LEGO Rewind episode. See you with Wave 3. Toodles.